have taken a topic of perio that is use of lasers in the periodontal surgery. Let us see what are the important concepts involved here. First of all, we should know laser is actually an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So the particle of the laser is a photon. Photon, we know they are the smallest units or packets of energy and they are having zero mass or charge. But when subjected to high energy levels, they undergo amplification. Stimulation which consequently emits a monochromatic coherent energy photons and that is called as the laser. The principle of laser was invented in 1958 and these are different properties of lasers we have like a monochromatic it is in a narrow range of wavelength with one specific color. Then lasers are coherent, all the emitted photon bear a constant phase relationship with each other in both time and phase. They are collimated, perfectly parallel beam of directional light and they are directional, a very tight beam which is very strong and concentrated. So monochromatic light has a very narrow range of frequency and just a single wavelength. It's only made up of light of one color. Coherence, all the emitted photons are in phase with each other and they have an identical peak and the valleys. Highly direction beam with a narrow cone of divergence. Parts of the laser is active medium part like gas, solid, liquid in the optical cavity. Power supply, external energy source like electrical energy, optical resonators which are the mirrors for amplification and the cooling system, control system and the delivery system. Now student, we have different types of laser delivery system like the articulated arms which comes with a hollow tube and 45 degree mirrors. Then we have hollow wave guide which comes with a semi-rigid tube and reflective pathway. Then we have optical fibers or additional rigid tape with the quartz silica flexible fibers or quartz sapphire tips or handheld units which are low level lasers. So the lasers can be operated as a continuous wave gated pulse mode with a physical gating of beam or a free running pulse mode with the property of the active medium. Let's see how the lasers are affecting the tissue first. So laser irradiation, you can see it's absorbed by the tissue and then it is reflected or it is transmitted or it is scattered. Now theoretical zone of tissue changes which are associated with the soft tissue exposure to the laser light. You can see the irradiated volume of the tissue. So how much is irradiated volume depends upon the exposure time of the laser, it depends upon the tissue characteristic, it depends upon the wavelength of the laser and the power density. Now inside the tissue you can see how much is the volume of the cut with the laser. This is the area of edema and the red one is the area of coagulation. You can see here ejected tooth tissue fragments. This is the volume of the cut with the laser and this is the area of explosive expansion of the tissue. The characteristic of laser therapy, penetration depth of lasers, tissue ablation, thermal side effect and hemostasis, then disinfection and detoxication effects, biostimulation and photomodulation. Firstly, we see penetration depth of the lasers. For example, you are using the ND YAG lasers or carbon dioxide laser or YAG laser, superficially absorbed. They can be a contact lasers or they can be non-contact lasers and this one also is the contact lasers. So this is non-contact, the carbon dioxide. ERYAG is a contact laser and this one is also a contact laser, ND YAG, which are deeply penetrating. The soft tissue ablation of photothermal effect is seen in carbon dioxide, ND YAG laser or diode, while the hard tissue ablation is seen in ERYAG laser, which has a thermomechanical effect. The ERYAG laser, you can see the absorption, this is a hard tissue, which is selective vaporization of water and organic component, while the mechanical effect or thermomechanical or photomechanical ablation, you can see there is some explosive ablation, micro crack propagation and micro fragmentation. Now the thermal side effect you can see, ND YAG laser coagulation depth is 0.3 to 0.8 mm, with the diode it is 1 millimeter, with the carbon dioxide it is 100 to 300 micrometer, with ER YAG the coagulation is 10 to 50 micrometer and for the heart tissue it is 5 to 30 micrometer. You can see there are three zones that are created, the carbonization zone, the coagulation zone and the stimulation zone that you see with the diode and the YAG laser which are deeply penetrating type. You are killing the bacteria but the photothermal effect, bacteria are evaporated, destroyed or denatured by using laser irradiation resulting in their devitalization or inactivation. So the ND YAG laser, they exhibit selective absorption in the pigment. They ablate or inactivate the toxic substances such as bacterial endotoxin like lipopolysaccharide. 
Now the biostimulation effect or laser or photomodulation effect. So biostimulatory effect may allow faster or more favorable wound healing after the laser therapy relative to conventional mechanical therapy. Photobiomodulation effects such as promotion of cell proliferation, differentiation and anti-inflammatory effect positively modulate the wound healing. The rate of wound healing is strongly influenced by degree of remaining collateral thermal injuries. Low level carbon dioxide laser has a good tissue remodeling property. So the operator is controlling the level of applied power, total energy to be delivered, that is energy density, rate and duration of exposure, that is a pulse, repetition and mode of energy delivery. The laser advantage definitely is hemostasis, ablation, detoxification, bactericidal activity, osseous tissue removal and continuous ease with the ER family. Disadvantage, it can lead to heart tissue damage, high cost, risk of pulpal damage and no single wavelength can treat all the diseases. Why the lasers are used in periodontics? The conventional method will lead to more bleeding in the surgical field. You have to go for suturing, local anesthesia, healing time is long. Post-operative discomfort is there, post-operative complication chances, infection, while laser has very effective hemostasis, no need of sutures, concept of tissue welding that you have here, topical anesthetic may be just required for some procedure, faster healing, minimal or no post-operative complications, and laser sterilization of the wound site, chance of infection are very low, along with the laser bandage that is given here. The periodontal applications in calculus removal, soft tissue excision, incision, ablation, decontamination of the root and implant surface, biostimulation, bacterial reduction, bone removal, removal of gingival pigmentation, reduction of periodontal pathogenic black pigmented bacteria and also for the management of dental hypersensitivity, the laser therapy can be used. Laser definitely has the following advantages that we already discussed. So, gingival soft tissue procedure laser can be used for gingivectomy, gingivoplasty, phrenectomy, phrenotomy, vestibuloplasty, opalectomy and depigmentation. So, following type of lasers which are commonly used, the diode, nd YAG laser, ER YAG laser, carbon dioxide laser, diode and nd YAG laser mainly for deep penetration while ER YAG and carbon dioxide lasers are for more superficial action. Now, if you see the comparison between the diode and nd YAG laser as compared to carbon dioxide laser, the diode and nd YAG laser, they are mainly effective for cutting and reshaping of the soft tissue, better hemostasis, greater thermal effect and thicker coagulated layer. While the carbon dioxide laser have rapid ablation of the soft tissue, they are also good in hemostasis and they are effective even for thicker tissue. But risk of thermal damage is higher with the carbon dioxide laser. Now, we see the ER YAG lasers, they are safer even in thin tissue, useful to remove melanin and metal tattoos. Fine cutting can be done and less hemostasis though as compared to other laser, very less thermal damage. So that is a good point and width of thermally affected layer is only 5 to 20 microns. Now we see the non-surgical therapy primarily aimed at efficient removal of plaque and calculus reduction of bacterial load. So conventional therapy limitation is incomplete removal of calculus, incomplete elimination of inflamed pocket lining. The laser being used, diode, nd YAG, ER YAG and carbon dioxide lasers. So, subgingival calculus detection, unique application of laser for this, ER YAG laser with fluorescent feedback system are used for calculus detection and difference in fluorescence emission properties of the calculus and the dental heart tissue when subjected to irradiation with 655 nanometer diode laser. So, that is the rationale we are using the lasers for subgingival calculus detection. Root surface alterations, mainly diode laser, dry or saline moistened root surface, no detectable alteration, blood coated specimen charring, while nd YAG lasers can lead to surface pitting, crater melting, carbonization of root surface, decrease in protein mineral ratio. nd YAG laser treated root surface are not favored for fibroblast attachment. Laser followed by SRP restores the biocompatibility of the root surface though. While carbonized lasers are not for the root surface, not for the root surface, cyanamide cyanide ions are detected on the carbonized layer. Charring inhibit the periodontal soft tissue attachment, so it is not good for your root surface. Erbium family or ER YAG laser are good. They create no thermal effect of cracking or fissuring and no major chemical or compositional change is seen on the root cement or dentin with the ER YAG lasers. Biocompatibility with the root surface and micro irregularity offers better attachment to the fibroblast. So only two soft tissue wavelengths that currently meet the criteria of having a delivery system able to deliver laser energy efficiently 
and effectively to the periodontal pocket for the non-surgical periotherapy is the ND YAG and the diode. They are well absorbed by the melanin, hemoglobin and other chromophores which are present in the periodontally diseased tissue. The laser energy is transmitted through water and poorly absorbed in hydroxyapatite. So both of these wavelengths are shown to be extremely effective against periodontal pathogen both in vivo and in vitro. Diode laser will reveal a bacteriocidal effect, help reduce inflammation and supported healing of periodontal pocket through the elimination of the bacteria. So the surgical periotherapy using the laser, carbon dioxide and erbium family involve use of laser for calculus removal, osseous surgery, granulation tissue removal and detoxification of the root surface and bone. The advantage of laser helps in better access in the furcation area, hemostasis, less post-operative discomfort and also faster healing. So, it is called as LENAP procedure, laser assisted new attachment procedure. We can see a disease pocket here, you are doing root debridement, decontamination, detoxification using a laser, removal of epithelial lining and disease connective tissue, bone defect debridement, biostimulation, removal of external epithelium, biostimulation blood coagulation, biostimulation and finally you will see improved wound healing here. The laser assisted GTR, preoperative clinical condition after laser assisted scaling and root planing in conjunction with the deepthalization of the oral and circular epithelium for the pocket reduction using a NDAC laser. And the C picture you can see stable long term clinical condition 5 years post operative. Implant therapy management of periimplantitis, the use of lasers. Conventional plastic curate and antibiotic, but new option is laser. The main rationale of using laser for periimplantitis is helps in disinfection and decontamination of the implant surface, granulation tissue removal, and the main lasers use is diode, carbon dioxide, or erbium. Laser, which is contraindicated, is NDAG here because it is known to cause implant damage. Now we can see the low level lasers like helium neon laser, gallium. Argonian laser, defocus carbon dioxide laser, bone stimulation effect or low level lasers, bone regeneration, promotion of wound healing, reduction of discomfort pain, suppression of inflammatory process, activation of gingival and pedial fibroblast, release of growth factor, alteration of gene expression of the inflammatory cytokine and photobio stimulation. The main objective of periodontal therapy is to eliminate the deposit of bacteria. So, conventional mechanical therapy, incomplete elimination due to anatomical complexity of the root and deep period pocket. But the principle behind the periodontal therapy, so the photodynamic theory, uh, photodynamic therapy student in the lasers, it helps in destruction of periodontal pathogenic bacteria by these rationale that polysaccharide in the biofilm are highly sensitive to singlet oxygen. During inflammation, there is reduced oxygen consumption, change in pH and the growth of anaerobes. When you use the photodynamic therapy, the tissue blood flow is increased and venous congestion is decreased. That will increase the oxygenation of gingival tissue 21 to 47 percent. And the activity of the photodynamic therapy has been reported in vitro and in vivo. So, by using this therapy, there is a greater bacterial reduction of Streptococcus sanguins. Now, healing after laser therapy, laser creates wound, heal more quickly and produce less scar tissue as compared to conventional scalpel therapy. There is more initial tissue damage may result and that wounds have less tensile strength during the early phase of healing. Now, student, if we see the classification of lasers based on their safety, so based on the potential of the primary laser beam or the reflected beam to cause biological damage to the operator eye or skin, there are four basic classes. We have class 1, class 2 AB, class 3 AB and the class 4. So, class 1 laser do not pose any health hazard. Beam is completely enclosed and does not exit the housing. Maximum power output 1 is 2. 10. Class 2 laser is visible light with low power output, no hazard, blinking and aversion reaction can still happen. Maximum power output is 1 milliwatt. 2 subdivision 2A is dangerous if given for more than 1000 second and 2B is 1 fourth of the second. Class 3A is any wavelength, danger when given greater than 1 fourth of a second, caution label is there, any wavelength and maximum output power is 0.1 to 0.5 watts. Class 3B is hazard to eye, direct or reflected, irrespective of time of exposure. Maximum output power is 0.5 to 5 watt. But class 4 is very hazardous for direct viewing and reflection. Maximum output power is greater than 5 watts here. Fire and skin hazard, you have to wear safety glasses. So, dental laser are actually class 3B or class 4 lasers. Now, some of the recent advantages in the laser is water lace that uses laser energized water to cut and coagulate soft and hard tissue. 
एग्जाम्पल वी हैव ई आर और सी आर वाई एस जी जी लेजर अवेलेबल एज वॉटर लेस सो दे इज वॉटर एनर्जाइजिंग वाई एस जी जी लेजर एंड हाइन पीस दैट डेवलप एयर एंड वॉट इन प्रपोर्शन विच कंबाइंड टू सिम्बैटिकली एक्साइड वॉट एंड मॉलिक्यूल फ्रॉम बोथ हैंड पीस स्प्रे एंड इन साइड द टारगेट इशू इफेक्टिव पेन फ्री बायोलॉजिकल माइक्रो एबलेजन ऑफ द टूथ स्ट्रक्चर एटोमाइज स्प्रे ऑफ वॉटर एंड एयर रीहाइड्रेट द टूथ प्रिवेंटिंग एनी हीट और टूथ बर्न इट कैन बी यूज फॉर एज अ फुल थिकनेस फ्लैप पार्शल थिकनेस फ्लैप स्प्लिट थिकनेस लेजर सॉफ्ट टिश्यू क्यूरेटाज लेजर रिमूवल ऑफ डिजीज इन्फेक्टेड इनफ्लेम नेक्रोस टिश्यू विद इन दीरियो पॉकेट एंड ऑल्सो फॉर रिमूवल ऑफ इनफ्लेम टिश्यू ऑस्टिप्लास्टी और ऑशियस रिकोन्टोरिंग Another advancement we have is Perio Wave. It's a photodynamic disinfection system utilizes non-toxic dye in combination with a low-intensity laser, enabling singlet oxygen molecule, which will destroy the bacteria.